What do you fear? What do I fear? Uh, I suppose I fear dying in, in some uh, obscene and crippled way. Yeah. Some uh, painful yeah. um, way that... Yeah, that that's speaking of my own self, if yeah. that's what you mean. Yeah. Well, I just wondered, as you think about where you are and your skills and, and, and the kinds of things you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, I once had a, had a moving conversation about depression, which later, not my conversation, but your experiences led to the book. Yeah. Uh, do you still, do, is, are you still depressed about? I have not suffered a real uh, profound, if you want to call it clinical depression, since I experienced the one that I wrote about. Yeah. In, which, which was, was so, pain, it, so painful well, that yeah. you just screamed out. Yeah, well that was, that's an experience I wouldn't wish on, on Heinrich Himmler, as I, I kept saying to myself. The most evil person you could think of, yeah, you wouldn't wish they'd have to go through no, that. No, it, it's unbelievable torment. Yeah. Uh, but as I tried to point out in the book, uh, Darkness Visible, it is a, a, a ordeal from which most people do recover, and, and if they're in the midst of this, they have to remember that they mo most likely will recover. And if they're in the midst of it, will they know for sure? Will they know what? That, that they're in the midst of it. Oh, right? yes. Yeah. If the you're pain <laughs> and the excruciating... Yeah. If you're in the midst of it, it is indistinguishable from any other pain you can possibly... What kind of mail did you get? What kind of response did it generate for you um, as a, to be public about this? Well, you know, all, all writers of any, uh, I guess, note eventually get a rather amo a heavy amount of mail, but uh, and all my life I've gotten a sort of a flow, but this was yeah, a deluge. This, this choice was a, and yeah, Nat Turner yeah. and all of that, you've written things that yeah. have resonated in yeah. American uh, Well, this was, this was just overwhelming. I, I, I had, it was just by the thousands that the, the letters came in. and uh, Saying, so I understand, understand you've told my yeah. story and yeah. that kind of thing? Yeah. And phone calls and the whole thing. It's, uh, it was very touching to me that, that I, I had not really realized that I was going to touch that kind of a nerve. Did it make you want to write nonfiction more? Not particularly. I think uh, one's nonfiction or fictional subjects sort of choose themselves, but uh, it, it certainly demonstrated that, uh, that the written word is still a very powerful vehicle yeah. for, for uh, reaching out. And How about memoir? Memoir? Well, I think that Darkness Visible, in a sense, was a memoir. Everything you write in part is autobiographical, is it uh, It has been. seems to me that I do touch on that, uh, the, the autobiographical mode, quite a bit. I don't know what precipitates that, but it's there. Because a writer knows what, it, what? I mean, I mean you're, well, you're shaped it, by your own experience. You are shaped by your own experience. The uh, important thing is not whether you do it, but whether you do it well. And it seems to me... <laughs> yes, that's true. It's it true seems about a lot of things. <laughs> to, like, like most things. Yeah, right. right. But it, it me means for me uh, uh, doing it so that uh, for the reader it will have a, a, another appeal aside from the egocentric, which, yeah. which, which is often a and problem. what is that other appeal? ability to put it down in prose that resonates and that, that sings and that one hopes yeah. sings and that people will respond to yeah. and that people will say that's my story or somehow yeah. they can feel the emotion of the character yeah I think that it's you know the imaginative act is is, is just that it's, it's trying to search for levels of meaning uh, that you are quite unaware that you possess I mean it's tapping into your subconscious uh, you sit down at first, you have no idea what you're going to do, and then all of a sudden, after an hour, you suddenly realize you're saying things you had not even known existed, yeah. because they're down there and somewhere in your subconscious. I find that a number of writers who have written memoirs uh, and written nonfiction will tell me that as they began to write, and you might have experienced this mm -hmm. here because this was in part mm -hmm. reflecting on personal experience and certainly your mother's death and you're thinking about your father's dying. Mm -hmm. you, you remember things you had no idea were part of your subconscious. It just sort of floats to the surface. Oh, absolutely. It, 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 it just, uh, you, it does, you, you don't dredge it up. It pops up. And there's uh, kind of astonishing, there are uh, revelations, epiphanies as Joyce used to call them, these kind of moments that, of, of, I don't mean to sound fancy. They're not. They're not spiritual yeah. experiences, but they are enormously f fascinating revelations of what one, uh, goes on in one's subconscious. Yeah. What's easiest for you? Is it creating character, creating dialogue, or descriptive narrative? 
Well, I think dialogue is probably the easiest of For all. For anybody, most people well, think, or just uh, it you. can be done badly, but yeah. I think uh, most writers. But that requires an ear, doesn't it? It does a require real ear. an ear. But if you have, I think, if you have an ear for music, yeah. and I am lucky, I think, in having an ear for music, uh, you you usually have an ear for dialogue too, and um, the rest is 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 just the sheer sweating it out with you know <laughs> I have to confess sometimes just seeking that absolutely perfect word, which I often find in the thesaurus. Wait a minute. <laughs> Pulitzer Prize winning, acclaimed <laughs> novelist. Don't let anyone... Goes to his thought, thesaurus. <laughs> don't let anyone underestimate the thesaurus. It's a very important tool for because me. Because it, it, it puts on your menu a word that expresses the emotion that you feel other than the one that first came to your mind. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it should be considered one of the great... Um, um, uh, word aids, treasures that we have, Roger's thesaurus. I use it all the time. When you say you recover from clinical depression, meaning you never revisit it, or, or that it is the use of, of uh, pharmaceuticals that... No, they, no, no. With me, it means if my case is of any, uh, exa yeah. any, any benefit, uh, I've recovered and I have not really suffered a, a similar a thing. Relapse and you know. Now, and, and what do your doctors tell you about that? Well, they, I've been told that it's uh, fairly common for re depression to return. Uh, I th the statistics seem to be 50-50. Uh, but for me, I've kept it at arm's length. I, I occasionally get a, a down moment, mm -hmm. but I have never yet uh, suffered the sense that I was going to be plunged into something as qu equivalent to what I went through before. Mm -hmm. and, and what's the message for the family of those who might have a husband or a wife or a brother or a sister or a father or mother? Endless patience. Um, my wife Rose was uh, the sort of ex the, 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 the star of the, the game. The exemplar of, the, of what uh, you ought to uh, do. Yeah, because, uh, because she was uh, always there. Yeah. And uh, this is very important. William Styron, dead at 81 years old. We thank you for joining us and see you next time.